Look at these dudes. They're tearing those fish flakes up. Shoving it as fast as you can. It's funny, they pick it up like a potato chip and eat it. My little pets. <laughs> oh, got another show down here. Arm wrestling. He's out holding hands, one of the two. I'm not sure what that is there. Hey, what's up folks? Jesse, Sell Reels Fishing, and I am out this very hot afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm kind of shiny. It's very hot right now, actually. Doing some maintenance on my Crabitat, or my Crabitat 2.0, actually, I should call it. Just keep my fiddlers alive that I use for bait. You know, I go out and I catch these myself. This whole setup here is basically my second iteration of how I keep them alive, and it's working much better. I used to keep them in small totes after I would go out and catch them. You know, these Rubbermaid containers you can buy at like Walmart. In the cooler months, that seemed to work fine, like late fall and all and into winter. Summertime, it didn't work so well. Um, I don't know if they got too hot or what was going on, not enough ventilation. But anyway, I had a couple big die-offs last year of them, so that kind of sucked. But anyway, I did some reading, some research, and got a whole nother setup here that I've been using since uh, the early spring when I first started to catch them and it's working really well. Um, basically what I have here is a five foot by five foot platform that I built. And this is a pool here that I just got at Walmart. So 56 inches uh, all the way across if you measure it at the top. And it's sitting on a five degree incline. Farthest point away from us is higher than this right here. This is the lowest. And I'll show you why I did that here in a second. But basically down inside here at this lowest point, I went to Lowe's and I bought the absolute cheapest shower drain that I could find. Once I set the pool on this plywood, I just drilled right through both with the appropriate size drill bit and sealed that shower drain in real tight. And that way I have a way of getting the water out of it without having to dump the thing, which is you do have to clean it you know, to keep them alive because they're kind of nasty, honestly. Mm -hmm. On that bottom of that shower drain, I got like a, a ball valve that I can just turn and it allows all the water to drain out into a bucket that I got down here underneath of it. Shut the valve back off and put my new water in it. But anyway, let me show you my setup here real quick. So I got this off the stand and I got a light down underneath so you can kind of see where the drain comes through and the ball valve that I have on it. When I crank that, it just allows it to drop right into the bucket here. And just to give you a look inside of the little setup here as you can see these dudes are in here just kind of hanging out and over here you know is the pool area where the water sits that's the reason i have it at an incline is so the beach area here which is made out of this multi-purpose sand that i got right at lowe's i have three bags of that that's 0.5 cubic feet is enough to build this beach up here for them and i have it split in the middle and over here is where the water stays but when this is full this is basically a five gallon bucket of water is what i put in here when i change it and it raises it enough that it goes up under the sand and keeps the sand nice and moist and as you see i mean they are they're tunneling these dudes are all pretty happy in here it seems when i first walk in they're all spaced out showing their claws and stuff off just like they do in nature so this seems to be working very well for me. These crabs I've had since early spring. Um, originally I had about 200 or so in here from that catch. Probably got about 75 left because I have been fishing quite a few times with them. When I go fishing, all I do is grab them out. Morning of, I put them in one of these containers and I'll throw you know, three or four of these styrofoam cups in there just to give them something to kind of hide from each other in. And I use whatever I use that day. And when I come back, most the rest of them are still alive. I just put them right back in here and they just are good until the next time that I go out. Okay, now as far as the water that you put in it, you can't use tap water because of the chlorine in it. Chlorine will kill them very quickly. So what you have to do is, I like to use rainwater. I usually will catch a rainstorm here in the summertime, but since it hasn't rained any this week, I've run some water out of our house bathtub. Now we have a whole house filter, which removes a lot of the chlorine, but just to be safe, I still use AquaSafe uh, for aquarium. It's ba it basically neutralizes chlorine and all that stuff in water, makes it safe for fish. So I add this, this one bottle will go quite a long ways. It pretty much is gonna last me all summer. And as far as the water, you, you don't wanna use straight fresh water because they'll only live in that about two weeks. Is you gotta have brackish water. So since you gotta have brackish water and I live out in the middle of the country and ain't no sound or brackish water anywhere around, I did a bunch of reading. I come up with this stuff here. It's called Instant Ocean. This is basically salt that you would use for saltwater aquariums or reef aquariums. You mix this according to the directions and it will produce pure salt water. Now, the way to get this to work, to get brackish water everywhere I read says you mix it about 25% 
of what they recommend on here for pure salt water. So this whole bag right here, I ordered on Amazon, I think it was like 10 bucks. It's enough to last me probably two to three years once I figured out how much of it you actually have to use. For a five gallon bucket, it, it takes a little bit over a half to five eighths of a cup is enough to make the water brackish to where these crabs are happy in it. So this right here is how you make the water and get a smaller bag, you don't need one this big. Just mix it, I like to mix it either in the rain water or the dechlorinated house water. You know, a day or so ahead of time. I let it sit for a day and make sure the salt dissolves completely, give it a couple good stirs. And at that point is when I go ahead and do my water change. Now the other thing here as far as food, did a bunch of reading on that as well. And it turns out uh, hermit crab food, basically these little pellets right here are good for the larger ones. And fish flakes, believe it or not, they love these things. I've actually sat in here and watched them, especially the smaller ones will run around and grab these, literally with their little tiny claw, pick it up and they just like, you know, just eat the whole thing up, it's hilarious. Um, I bought both of these this spring. There's still plenty in them. Now, when you do put it in there, only put it up on the sand and the dry land is where you want to put it, not in the water because it makes the water grosser than it already is. Now these here, these little houses that I come up with, basically all this is, is very cheap insulation spacers for like your attic. If you're putting insulation in your attic, you would run this to make sure it has an airway. It comes in long strips. Each one of these was like $1.50 and you cut them up. There's basically one in here cut up right now and it's made all these little houses for me. It works really good. They can get up on top of them. They get underneath of them and they're plastic. So at the end of the season, you can take them and soak them in a big thing of water and clean them and then reuse them again. It's very cheap, very effective. So anyway, I've got a bucket of water down here ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a water change real quick so y'all can check it out. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the valve underneath and let this water drain out. And I don't know, see if we have any dead ones or not. While that's draining, I usually go ahead and pick all the cups and stuff up. And it appears that all of them are still pretty healthy. Yeah, oh, we've got some mating going on right here. You don't really quit that. I haven't seen a single dead one, so the technique seems to be working. So sometimes if it's really dirty, I'll go ahead and kind of scrub some of this, but this actually looks fine to me. So I don't go ahead and do is shut the valve back off. Okay, grab my bucket of clean water here. Oh, which is very heavy. Go ahead and start putting it in. And I'll usually go ahead and grab their houses. Some of them like just sitting on top of these in the water. I, just, I like to give them plenty of shelter. It's funny, I always look at these as like pets now, which is hilarious. My wife and my daughter picked on me. But I always consider it a challenge to see how long I can keep them alive. And with this setup right here, uh, it seems to be almost indefinitely. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, I do that once a week, just drain the water out, add a new bucket of water in. Since I've been using this setup here, I've only found two dead crabs in here out of the 200 that I started with. That's not too bad. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed them real quick. I'm going back to your house. Let's go check that new water out. Oh Lord, this is hilarious. So basically I just take a bunch of the fish flakes and just kind of drop them you know, randomly all up here on this dry land. They last a long time. I do this about three times a week. Maybe I'll come out here and feed them. Then I'll take a few of the pellets. And I just scatter them about. These are good for the bigger guys. That dude's already grabbing the fish flakes and tearing them up. I tell you, they love some fish flakes. All right, folks, there you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's my setup for keeping the fiddler crabs alive. Um, like I said, I'm very lucky that I have this, uh, a barn here that we just use for storage to keep them in. Keeps them out of the sun. You definitely don't want them in direct sunlight like this. I don't know how well they would do Plus the water would evaporate very quickly. Got to keep them cool. It's good ventilation out here is something else that I figured out. Putting them in totes, you definitely don't want to put the lid on because the ammonia gases will build up and it'll kill them, um, you know, from their waste and everything. Uh, water changes, you got to do that frequently. I do this once a week. Uh, you got to use the brackish water. Once again, 25% solution of the recommended mix of that instant ocean uh, sea salt. You can use tap water if you can't get rainwater, but be sure to use AquaSafe in it to neutralize the chlorine because it will kill them. Tropical fish flakes, just go to Walmart and get the cheapest ones you can get. Or shrimp pellets, uh, freeze dried shrimp work good. 
pretty much anything that you would feed like hermit crabs these dudes can eat if you do come in and check them and you see one or two dead be sure to get them out you don't want to leave leave that in there because that'll definitely contribute to bacteria and stuff building that's what i got going uh, i hope i answered all the questions if of course if you have any i don't mind please just leave a comment i'll be glad to answer it peace out see you in the next video